Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're building a DPM kit. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any updates like this video where I'm going to be building a DPM kit. Now some of you may be saying, What's a DPM kit? DPM stands for Design Preservation Models, and it's one of my favorite types of kit. The reason for this is they're fairly easy to assemble and they allow for a decent amount of customization and they're great for filling out street scenes. A lot of you have probably built a DPM kit or two in the past. They're, some, they're one of those like get your feet wet kits, but you can really have some fun with these and you can really customize them because of how simple they are. So I'm gonna show you guys how I put them together. Um, it's a really simple way how I detail them and hopefully at some point we're gonna be doing some lighting inside of it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is a DPM kit and DPM stands for Design Preservation Models. Now this is a little saloon kit. It is an in-scale kit, but the HO scale and other scale kits are packaged in a similar way. So let's go ahead and open this up. First of all, we have the little booklet that has the instructions as well as some styrene and some clear acrylic for the windows. Now we're going to go ahead and take the parts out and you can see it's a really, really simple, there's not much to it. Um, we do have the four walls of the building. Now you'll notice that there is a lot of flashing and we are going to have to do some trimming to get off of that. We also have the door and half of the chimneys that come out of it. So let's go ahead and get started with actually building this kit. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is remove as much of the flashing as possible. And what we're going to do is we're going to use my little snippers here and we're gonna trim off as much as we can at first. When you're clearing flashing out of windows, you always want to scoop away from the middle bar. That way you never break it. Okay, now we've cut off as much as we can, so we wanna start sanding off the little burrs that are left. And this stuff sands pretty easy. I'm using 100 grit sandpaper here, and it smooths out fairly quickly without much work. Now when it comes to the two side walls, I'm gonna to want to not only sand these, but I want to make sure that they match and that they're going to be equal on each side. If there's some areas you can't reach with the sandpaper, you can always use a utility knife of some kind. Now we're going to spray paint the interior walls of the pieces black. Now the reason we're doing this is because we potentially may want to put some lights in this and sometimes brighter lights can shine through the plastic. So by painting the interiors black, this eliminates some of the shine through. Once that's done, we leave them to dry. And once they are dry, we want to scratch off some little edges that we're going to be using for the gluing surfaces. The glue doesn't adhere the best to the paint. So we just scratch some areas off so that we have better adhesion. And I'm just using simple testers glue. You can find this in just about any hobby shop. And I know people have different glue preferences, so, but mine's just the simple orange tester bottles, nothing fancy here. And now I'm just gonna start placing the pieces together. And notice how I am just sitting them upright. And if you sand them out evenly, they're very easy to stand upright when you are gluing them together. And you also want to be careful that you do not glue it to the base of whatever surface you are assembling this on. And uh, you just want to use the glue sparingly when you do that. And you can see this kit goes together in pretty quickly once you've got it prepped. The last thing I'm going to do with this is I wanna make sure that all the walls are perfectly vertical and that all the pieces have a good bond with the glue. So I do a lot of touching up and a lot of checking before I leave it to set it out to dry. So here I am just checking over the kit and uh, making sure that I've got it as square as possible. Sometimes these kits aren't perfectly square, so you do kind of have to fudge it a little bit, but you wanna make sure that 
it's as square as you can get it. So while I'm getting ready to set that up to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and glue together the little styrene strips that make the little doorway entrance and we're gonna paint that a little bit later. Now I just set some supports on it and go to let it dry overnight. And here is what we end up with. Um, I'm very happy with it except for these little edges right here. And uh, we're gonna use a little bit of model putty to fill in the cracks right there and this is gonna you're gonna see this a little bit when we paint it but overall it kind of adds almost like a weathered detail like this has had to be repaired before so I'm really okay with it um, and I am using an airbrush with some simple acrylic paint and some airbrush thinner to paint and you notice that I am applying the paint sparingly now I have also done these kits where I just use regular spray paint so if you don't have an airbrush just go and find some spray paint and you can do that, just make sure you're doing it in a well-ventilated area. But I have recently been doing a lot of airbrushing and I really, really like it. Just one thing, make sure you wear gloves when you airbrush, so it makes it a lot easier. And you always wanna make sure you get all the little details and then you're going to leave this set out to dry overnight. And here it is after it has been airbrushed. I love the way the detail pops a little bit more with airbrushing versus other techniques. So now it's time to do the roof and we're gonna use this styrene sheet that is given to us with the kit. And we, what I do is I like to trace out the interior on it with a pen or a marker of some kind. And this just gives me a very close outline of what I will need to cut the roof to. Now, using a straight edge, I take my utility knife and cut the roof to size. Once I have it cut to size, I do a test fit to make sure that it is going to go in. And there you go. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray paint this styrene strip that's the roof black. Now there's a lot of different ways to do roofs and I'm actually planning on going over this in a later tutorial. Okay, so now it's time to do some detail painting. And the way that I do detail painting is I like firm, flat edged brushes. This gives me a nice, even way to distribute paint. And the way that I start is I start with the top of these buildings. Now. For the front, I will go from the interior to the exterior, but for the sides, I go from the exterior to the interior. The reason for this is I don't want to get any paint on the front from running over the edge, even little flickers. So I will go from the exterior to the interior of the building on the top trim. And the nice thing about acrylic paint is you can do a little bit of wiping off if you do mess up a little bit. You got a little bit of working time, especially if you let the previous layer of paint dry already. The next thing I do is I paint the side of the trim and I'm using the same brush and I'm using a similar technique where I'm painting away from the surface that I do not want to get paint on. And this is very, very delicate and I just want to make sure that I get it on just the areas that I want it to get on. The last thing I do on the top is I paint the interior near the, the roof line is going to be gray so that you have that nice concrete look for when we put the roof in there and we don't have the black mixing in and it gets a little bit confusing it looks more realistic next i begin detailing the front using the same brush and we paint the large sections of trim around the building first and I'm still using that large flat brush and I'm just very, very careful, very, very deliberate in my motions. And this is actually one of the toughest parts right here is getting that line right there. And um, I just make sure that I'm very, very close and very, very careful right there to get that line perfectly. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the lower section of the building to that gray. This is the last section that I'm really going to be using the large brush on because now I'm getting into some really small areas that need some detail. So I will be switching over to doing the smaller brush and you guys will be getting ready to see that next. And now you can really see why I like the firm flat brush. It really makes for fairly even coats and it also makes it very easy to know exactly where you're going to be putting paint. Sometimes those uh, more soft and flimsy brushes, they can kind of be unpredictable with their paint, but the, but the straight edge firm brush, you can really control where you are putting the paint. Now you can see that I've switched over to the smaller brush for the smaller details. And what I'm doing here is still the same flat edge, it's still the same firm bristles. I'm just getting those really, really fine details. I'm not gonna lie, this takes practice and uh, you're gonna want to do this on less expensive kits, which is that's one really good reason why these DPM kits are really great to learn on for painting is because they're not expensive and you can also repaint them, um, especially if you're using an airbrush and not lose too much detail. So here I am doing the last little bits of the concrete of the window frames right here. And as you can see, that really tiny flat edge brush just lets me get that paint exactly where I want it. Last thing I'm gonna paint is the little doorway right here. And this is just gonna be all gray, so I don't really have to worry too, too much unless I'm worried about getting paint on my hands, which if you're a modeler, you're not. Now it's time to start cutting some of the acrylic. I use a very simple technique where I just simply match the acrylic up to the different sides where the windows are, and that just makes it really easy to cut the windows to size. You can eyeball it. The great thing about this is, is you're just using a few little dots of glue and using some sort of tool to place it. And I use this 90 degree little model all that I have and I use that to press my windows in place rather than getting my fingers in there because sometimes you can mash glue a little bit too much with too much pressure and the 90 degree all really lets me push down those windows with ease. Once I have put all of the windows in place I am going to use my little snippers as tweezers and we're going to place the door and the door you're really kind of got to fidget with and get it perfect and that's another rare place where the 90 degree all really comes in handy and uh, i'm just going to keep pushing it in place and then i'm finally able to put the windows on the front side windows as well in place so now we're getting up to where we're going to be installing the roof and the kits come with these little styrene strips and i just do an eyeball measurement and i just cut them and then I put a little bit of glue on them and I slap them right in place. The one thing you wanna make sure is that you get these things perfectly level going across the building. You don't have to have them perfectly level. Matter of fact, some of the buildings have a little bit of a slope to them on the roof. So you don't have to get it perfectly flat, but you do wanna have it being relatively the same spacing on the front and the back support. And for the larger buildings, you do want to put in side supports as well. And you can see here, I'm doing a little bit of leveling and and uh, just really eyeballing it because A, I don't have a level that small, but you can eyeball it and get it pretty close. And if you trimmed your roof, these are more of just kind of safety supports and the tension of the roof itself should hold it in place. Now it's time to do some weathering and I use ground up drawing pastels and these have worked really well for me for pretty much every time. I just take a little bit of sandpaper and I pick a color that I want and I just run it across the sandpaper and it gives me a nice really fine powder. Now the thing that I really like about using the drawing pastels is you can seal them in but you don't really need to. Once they're on, they are on and they are very difficult to get back off. So I know a lot of weathering powders, they really, you have to seal them in, but these you can go completely without sealing them. I'm not gonna seal them on this building in case I ever wanna change it a little bit, but these things are going to stick and they are not gonna go anywhere once you're done. So you A, wanna use them very sparingly and B, make sure that you are doing it exactly where you want it to go. And I like little runs down buildings. I like run down buildings. So I like the little runs from the windows, um, 
I like very dirty, very realistic looking buildings that look like they've been there for ages. None of the uh, perfectly brand new look. The last thing that we need to do is the roof detail. So we're going to put a few dabs of glue on the styrene strips that we placed and we're going to place our roof after it has dried. You can see it's a nice, smooth, flat black. Then we're going to be doing our little roof details, our little chimney halves, and you just paint those up and then you glue them in place and then you paint the tops after it kind of smooths them out and evens them out. Then the last thing that I do is I take a little bit of black foam, you can use cardboard or construction paper or whatever, and I stick it in the middle like this at a diagonal. Now what this does is it adds depth to the building. And you can see right here, you can't see through the building, but you can see the reflection in the window and that adds a ton of realism. Here is our final result on the building. I'm gonna be doing some detailing later, maybe some water decals, but this is our DPM kit. So that's how I build and detail a DPM kit. They're really, really fun to make and build. They're great for all ages. I built my first one when I was 11 and it wasn't that great, but they're still really, really fun kits to build. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates. If you want to buy the DPM kit that I have in this video today, I'll put a link in the description below. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Happy railroading!